This actually might be the craziest automation I've ever built. It takes every video from a YouTube creator's profile, it downloads it, transcribes it, and then stores it in this database. It's gonna seem a little bit complicated, but I'll break everything down step by step so that you can build the exact same system for yourself. So let's just jump right into it. This is the database that you're gonna be building. So you can see the title, the topic, the description, the length, likes, views, the thumbnails, the number of comments, the day it was published. You can see everything all in this database. And we also have this creators tab here where you can store information like number of videos, total number of views. You can check the views per video. I couldn't get subscriber count to pull in properly, uh, but there's different API calls we can make to get that. So not too, too worried about that bringing into the system. And then if they have a contact email available, we can also pull that. So let's just jump right into the build and I'll show you guys how this exactly works. So this is the automation and I'll, I'll make myself a little bit smaller here so that you guys can see everything that's going on. Um, essentially, we're starting with a webhook. We don't need to start with a webhook. We're only starting with a webhook here because this is triggered by a Chrome extension. So within this set variables, I'll have to blur a few things out, but you can see we're storing the channel ID and that's just coming from the webhook. We're storing the rapid API key, which is right here. I have that blurred out. And then we're also storing the scrape creators API key. So that's something to note really quick. Just head down to the description down below. I left links for both Rapid API and Scrape Creators. So you can sign up for those. You get a bunch of free credits. You can start using the system right away. And that's everything that we store when we're setting these variables. And now we're actually gonna kick off the automation. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna get general creator details. And we're gonna use a Rapid API called the Better YouTube Channels Details API. And we're gonna get channel details from this specific channel. So. We have to pass in our rapid API API key. We have to pass in the host and then we don't have any body content. So this is the entire API call right here. Then we're going to get the first page of videos from that specific creator. So here's where we're going to be using the scrape creators API. And all we need to pass in for this is in a query string. We need to give them the handle of the channel that we want to get the videos from. So what this is doing is it's basically grabbing the first 30 videos because those are the ones that are shown on the first page and it's only returning those, but it's also going to give us a continuation token that allows us to scrape the next page and then the next page after that, etc. but we'll cover that in a minute here. So this is all you need to do for this first API call. And then we create a record for the creator. So that's just going to create a record in the creators table. And I'll show you guys how we set that up as well and see that we're just mapping the channel name, the channel URL, the video count, view count, subscriber count, uh, the avatar URL. So that's their profile picture as well as their email and any keywords that are associated with their channel. I always like to say the more data, the better. So even though I don't have an exact use for these keywords right now, I still want to store them for later. And one quick thing to note is that if you want to calculate views per video, you're going to have to create a formula and that's just going to be the total views divided by the total number of videos on that channel. So we'll head back to make.com and we'll take a look at these routes. There's a couple different things going on here and I'm just going to explain the first portion first. So if you're not familiar with routers in make.com, this is just going to route our data in a specific order. For example, here we are iterating through that list of videos that we got from the first page. You can see we're iterating through this data videos. And then for each video, we're going to get video details using the YouTube media downloader API from rapid API. So this API call is going to be a get request. We're going to use the X rapid API API key. This is just your rapid API API key, the host. Uh, that's the API call. And that's going to give us all of the details, including the thumbnail, the video URL, everything we need to actually make this automation work. Now that we have the video, we can actually transcribe the video. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the data audios items and we're going to grab the first URL. So this is going to be the MP3 file that we want to transcribe. And the reason we're using DeepGram to do this transcription here is one, I think it's a lot better than OpenAI's Whisper. And two, because we can't really trust the transcripts that we get from YouTube. I don't know about you, but every time I'm watching a YouTube video and I turn on closed captions, it seems to be completely wrong. And I want this data to be accurate. So I figured I'd use DeepGram for the transcription and I'm going to use the Nova model, which is the best model they have. By the way, I also left a link for DeepGram in the description down below. You can sign up, you get $200 in free credits. So you actually get a lot of use out of it and you can start using this system right away for free. But anyways, the settings that I have set up in this specific module are Nova as the tier, the model just being the general model 
the language as English. You can change that as needed and then punctuate to true. I also have smart format set to true and I'll show you why these things matter in the formatting step in a couple steps here. So we click OK. So in the create script, this is where we're actually going to create a record for the individual script record. So as we're iterating through those 30 videos, we're going to create a new record in Airtable for each one. This is how the data is mapped. So we have the title of the video, the creator, which is the record ID of the previous Airtable module we used. And then we have something that looks a little complicated here, but I'll explain it very simply. So this black part here is just going to be our output from DeepGram. And we're using a replace function on that to replace anything that has a period and a space. So this would be the end of a sentence. And we're replacing that with two new line characters. So that's going to give us the format that we need for the scripts to look like this. And this is very readable for humans, but it's also very good for training AI models. And that's exactly why I formatted it this way. In here, we could store the topic, the long topic, but in this specific tutorial, I'm not doing this because it's a few other API calls. If you wanted to do it, all you need to do is add a couple modules in between DeepGram and Airtable. And you're going to use OpenAI to determine a summary of the script and then OpenAI Vision to determine a summary or a description of the thumbnail. You can store that information here and then we're storing the description, the length of the video, the number of likes, the view count, and we're also storing the thumbnail of the video. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting trick here, so I figure I'll explain this real quick. What we're doing is we're grabbing a specific item within the data thumbnails array. And typically we would just put a number in here, but since we want to get the last item of the array, we're going to use the length of the array as the number in between. So this is always going to grab the last item, which is going to be the highest quality thumbnail we can get. We're also storing comments. Now, just a note, this has to be a text field with an air table. It's going to give it to you as 11 K instead of showing the numbers for 11,000, it'll say 11 K. So because of that, we need to store it as a text field. There's a couple ways we can get around it, but it's a little bit complicated and I didn't feel like doing it for this system. And then we're storing the publish time. I'm just formatting this in a format that's familiar to me. And then lastly, we're storing the link and every YouTube link is just youtube.com slash watch question mark V equals the video ID. So I populated that here. All right, moving on. So that is the first section. And this is really the, the main core of exactly what this automation does. Now let's move on to the bottom section where we're actually repeating through all of the other pages and doing the exact same process. The part that gets a little bit confusing here is repeating through all of the pages. So I'm going to do my best to explain that part and the rest of it actually looks exactly like the top up here. So the reason that we got the creator details in the beginning of the automation was because we need their total channel video count. And we need that because we need to figure out how many total pages there's going to be. If you think about it, there's 100 videos, there's going to be four pages because you have 30, 30, 30, and then a page with 10. And so this formula right here calculates that. We're taking the total channel count, we're dividing it by 30, we're using the ceiling of that, so that's going to round it up to the next highest number. So in our case, it would be three point something rounded up to four. And then we're just going to subtract one because we've already gone through the first page of videos. So we don't need to scrape that page anymore. So there's one less page for us to scrape. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to repeat everything after the repeater the number of times that we put in. So for example, let's just say this was our example where we had 100 videos. We already scraped that first page. So instead of it repeating four times, it's going to repeat three times. Then I'm going to use a little trick here that I use all the time when I need to sort through or paginate through different items. And that is a get and then a set. So we're going to get a variable here and we're going to call this continuation token. Now, this might seem weird because we're getting a variable when we haven't even set it yet, but you'll see why this works in a second. And then we're going to get all the other pages. So in here we have handle equals and then we're encoding that channel. So very typical as we would have expected. However, now we have something a little weird here. So if the repeater is equal to one, which means it's the first time it's going through this path, then we're going to use the continuation token from the first module we use. If it's running through the second, third, fourth, fifth time, it's going to use the continuation token that we got here. And the reason for that is because we're setting that variable here using the continuation token that comes from this module. So that in the next go around of the repeater, when we get continuation token, it's going to get the continuation token that was just set right here. 
and it's going to use that to make the request. Then we iterate through each of the videos on each of the pages and we do the exact same process that we did before. And if this seems just a little bit too complicated and you want to copy and paste this exact system and just use it for yourself without having to go through the trouble of trying to configure all of this and, and write in all of these formulas yourself, you can just get it directly in my community digital operations. I left a link for it in the description, but it's super affordable to join. I give away every single automation that I've ever built and I hop on calls with students every single week. If you want to see more content exactly like this, please give me a subscribe. I'm trying to do my best to record more of these videos, breaking down step by step how I actually build these automations because a lot of you guys on Instagram have been asking for them. Either way, I'll see you in the next one.